let's derive a trigonometric identity that tells us what happens when we square cosine. We're going to need two other trigonometric identities to do this derivation. In the past few videos, we derived these two uh, trigonometric identities. Let's talk about this one first. In the previous video, which you can find if you uh, click on the link to the playlist in the description below or up here, uh, you can actually find that we discussed the unit circle in the complex plane. And that's how we managed to come up with this relationship over here. This is Pythagoras' theorem in disguise. It's also the formula for the Euclidean distance in disguise. This over here is the horizontal component squared, and this is the vertical component squared. Or you can call this the real component and the imaginary component. And when you square that horizontal real component and that vertical imaginary component, you have to get 1, because 1 is the length of the hypotenuse if you're stuck inside the unit circle. So that is actually where this comes from. It comes from the unit circle in the complex plane. And we derived that in the previous video. Before that, in the past few videos, we also derived this trigonometric identity. And we used two separate techniques. One technique was to take a more general trigonometric identity and set two angles equal to each other. That's where this 2 theta came from. And another technique was to start off with e to the i theta and actually square that and use some algebraic manipulation to get this form over here. So this is actually the real component of a more general expression that involves a real component and an imaginary component. The imaginary component involves sine of 2 theta. So there's actually another part to uh, this trigonometric identity. There's another complementary part that involves the imaginary component. But this over here, this matches up the real component with the real component. And that's actually all we need for this video. We, need, we don't need to worry about that imaginary component, which tells us what sine of 2 theta is equal to. All we need is this and this over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this guy a little bit. I'm going to manipulate it. And then I'm going to substitute that manipulated version into this guy. And that's actually going to get us that uh, really useful trigonometric identity that I want to use in this video. So let's get started. First, what I want to do is I want to get rid of this sign. This sign is very annoying. I want everything to be in terms of cosine. All I want is a cos squared. And all I want to see is cos of 2 theta. So I want to link together what happens when you square cosine and what happens if you double the angle in cosine. I want some kind of relationship between those two concepts. So I need to get rid of this sign. So how am I going to get rid of the sign? Well, I can write this expression over here in terms of sign. And then I can substitute that into that one over there. So what can I do? I can take sine of theta and move it to the other side. Or I could also take cosine of theta and move it to the other side. I'll show you what that looks like. So what we can do is we can write sine of sine squared of theta is equal to 1 minus cos squared of theta. So this is the exact same trigonometric identity. I've just moved the cosine squared to the other side. So now we have this form over here. So just this guy getting moved to the other side. We've subtracted cos squared of theta from both sides of the equation. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute this into this expression over here. I'm going to turn this guy up into here. So when we substitute this guy in here, then we're going to get rid of the sine squared of theta. So let's do that. That's going to give us cosine of 2 theta is equal to, we're still going to have cos squared of theta. So we have cos squared of theta. And then we're going to subtract from that sine squared of theta. But sine squared of theta is the same as all of this. So we're going to have minus 1 minus cosine squared of theta. And that is exactly what we wanted. Now we have no sine squareds appearing over here. It's just cosine squared and cosine of 2 theta. So what can we do to this right hand side? Well, over here we have a minus being applied to this one. That gets a minus 1. And over here we have a minus times a minus, which turns into a plus. And that plus gets added, so we have two copies of cos squared 2 theta. So this is actually the same as 2 times cos squared of theta minus 1. Right? So that minus 1 comes from here, and we have two copies because the minuses come together to give a plus. So we have a link between this guy and this guy. So now what we can do is we can add 1 to both sides. 
That's going to give us cos of 2 theta plus 1. And then we can divide everything by 2. And that's going to repackage this equation in terms of cos squared. So then we're going to have cos squared of theta is equal to cosine of 2 theta plus 1 all divided by 2. And another way it's commonly written is uh, we want to put the 1 first. So we can actually have a half. Let me just fix that. We have a half plus 1 half times cosine of 2 theta. So this is another way that it's commonly written. So this thing in this box, I'll put this in a big box. This thing is the trigonometric identity that I wanted to derive in this video. So where is this half coming from? That's just this 1 on 2. And I've just reordered them because this is a common way of representing this. So let's just go through some reasoning. And then we're going to discuss what this actually means in uh, a visual sense. So what we've done is we've taken this trigonometric identity, we've substituted it into this trigonometric identity to get rid of sine squared. Now that sine squared has disappeared, we've rearranged this by adding 1 to both sides. So we've moved that minus 1 and turned it into a plus 1, and we've divided by 2. And that is what's given us this relationship. So cos squared of theta is equal to cos of 2 theta plus 1 all divided by 2. And then we split this guy up into a half plus a half times cos of 2 theta. So why have I split it up in this way? But what this is telling us is that if you square the cosine, it's the same as doing a vertical translation uh, one half units up, and then adding to that a scaled version of cosine 2 theta. So it's a scaled version because there's a factor of one half out the front. So doing this operation of squaring is the same as doing a bunch of these other operations, where we double the angle, scale the cosine function, and vertically translate it. So all of these translations together are equivalent to just squaring it. That is what this trigonometric identity actually tells you. It tells you how these transformations to the cosine function are linked. So the cosine function, when you square it, isn't some random curve. It is actually another version of a cosine function. It's just a slightly shifted and modified version of the cosine function, where the frequency has been changed because of this factor of 2, and the amplitude has been changed. And also, what has been changed is the vertical translation. So we've moved this upwards, so it can't be negative. So this can't be negative anymore. This has to be a positive value. So this is a very useful trigonometric identity. And hopefully, uh, you've seen the reasoning of this derivation. And we're going to keep doing more interesting derivations based on trigonometric functions. You can find other videos like this in the quantum mechanics playlist if you click over 